So we're here again for the next installment of the Game Boy Mega Machine. Yeah, it's nowhere near done. It's supposed to have twice as many Game Boys, actually more than that. And yeah, a lot of um, analog parts. But before we get to building those parts of the synthesizer, uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of a problem. So this is the preliminary part of the Game Boy Mega Machine. Imagine these squares, a teeny weeny weeny little Game Boys. All with their own little lives that they've got to worry about. But anyway, yeah, so as you can see, I've only built this many so far. Yeah, that's fine. And this will be built, hopefully, in the next video. This case right here. Because I've already started to put this together. I've been putting the panels and I've been soldering. Even Mel has been helping me solder some of the panels and stuff for this because it's just a heck of a lot of work. Each of these lines is a separate synthesizer voice. And this is gonna become a six voice polyphonic synthesizer. So each of these are basically matched monophonic synthesizers. If you're playing on a keyboard, note one becomes this sound, note two that you play becomes that rather, and the next one's that. So that's how it's going to work is like, these are all gonna be matched so when you play a polyphonic synthesizer sequence, it sounds the same, but it's polyphonic. The problem is, is here, I have all of the planned analog synthesizer parts. Basically, I kind of want it like the um, CS80. After I played the Yamaha CS80, which is an insanely expensive machine that I was lucky enough to play just after Christmas. And it's basically got two synthesizers in one box because you're playing and you've got one row on the top and one row on the bottom, each with their own separate uh, control. So you could play, the first synthesizer kind of comes in and then plays its thing, and then the next one can come in, and it makes really quite complicated, you know, interesting timbres and stuff. So, I can choose whether to send either this Game Boy, I could send this Game Boy to the filter one, and this Game Boy to filter one, and this Game Boy to filter one, and that Game Boy to filter one, but then these can all go to filter two, so they act like two separate synthesizers all on one key press. I know, it's a bit, complicated and maybe a bit too much. However, I'm I'm so fickle that I don't know whether that's the synthesizer I want. Maybe I want all of them to go to synthesizer to channel 1. And I want channel 1 to actually be like an MS20 so it's got a high pass filter and then a low pass filter in par in series instead of both of them being separately separate things. So basically, I want to be able to send the Game Boy to either route number one into the next part of the circuitry or route number two, A and B. And I can do that with, I wanna do that with any of these. So I can either choose whether the Game Boy sound goes out one side or out the other side. Or out both, it doesn't matter. Which is fine, what you can do is you can create a switch. You can make a switch so you flick it to A and B. But the problem is, is when there's six that are exactly the same. You need these to be matched, so if I flick a switch, it sends all of these six Game Boys to their designated paths. But separately, I know it's a head fudge. It's a bit much to think about, but basically I need something, instead of a switch, it needs to be a voltage controlled switch. So you flick it on, and then the switches behind these kind of do what you need to do. I was initially gonna use relays for this, so you turn the switch on down here on the control board, and it would flick a relay behind all of these to kind of send it to the separate things. But then um, I, it was suggested to use analog switches, which are basically uh, relays, uh, well, sort of do a relay job, but inside a small chip, and you could have hundreds of them and thousands of them. And I was nearly gonna do that, but the problem is, is you can either, you can only have on, or off with these. When I was thinking about it more, I kind of wanted them all to have a volume control, so you could either have on or off, and everything in between, so it's like Heeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
and I need 96 VCAs in this part of the synthesizer alone. Meaning that after all of the VCAs on this side have been added to it, it's going to be well over 100 VCAs in this Game Boy machine. But the problem is I'd already built all the Game Boys. The Game Boy modules have been built and that would mean I'd have to take them out and sort of build them again, which is not what I really wanted to do. So I looked for alternatives and I remembered that I have bus boards in the back. These are basically just the boards that are taking the audio from the Game Boys and also the light for the backlights because I planned to kind of like make the backlights separately addressable so you could kind of use it all in all as an 8x8 pixel screen. We'll talk about that a bit later. So this is what the bus board looks like in the back currently. Basically there's just two connectors. This is for the audio and this is for the backlight. I've done away with all of this and basically I've completely rebuilt it. And this is what it looks like now. Yeah, it's um, a whole lot more chips and stuff. Basically, you can see there is eight rows of um, chipsets. The top chip is actually two VCAs all in one chip. It's called the AS3360 and these are actually found in a lot of um, 1980s polyphonic synthesizers. So I figured, why not use these? You can get these off the internet. There's a link in the description if you want to use these. And there's also a schematic of how you can use them on their own and it's just an easy, simple way of having two VCAs out of one chip. So basically I built a row of two VCAs for each Game Boy. That means I need one of these bus boards for each row of Game Boys. I know, it's quite a lot. And then all of these VCAs, 96 in total, actually plug into like a master controller that's on the bottom Game Boy Mega Machine case. And that is this, it's 16 rows of um, knobs the top ones are basically just the volume, sending it to signal path A or signal path B. And then underneath that is a control voltage in with some attenuation. So you can actually kind of attenuate where all of these Game Boys are going in the analog signal path, you know, whenever you want. So it's pretty damn complicated. And this part is actually just a heck of a lot of wires. And this is just a load of mixers mixing the volume input with the CV input. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. That isn't actually the only thing that this bus board is doing. This bus board is also controlling the backlights, meaning that the backlights can all be turned on and off whenever you want. So you can make pretty pictures with the Game Boy Mega Machine as a whole. You can make animations. I haven't planned all of that yet, but I've just put in the circuitry in place to, you know, be able to have that happen. And maybe by the end of this video, we'll have like, um, I'll have a turn on boot on sequence where all of the backlights flash in a fancy way. Who knows? But in case you're wondering why the update between the last Game Boy Mega Machine update and this one took so long, was because this and the board and stuff took a lot of figuring out. Oh, look at the back, it's very fancy. But this was quite a project on its own. Uh, to the point that I actually ordered these first last week or so and I made some glaringly obvious mistakes that I'm like face planting and I'm actually uh, repurposing these as um, one off, well 10, I've got 10 of them, uh, very limited run, look mum no computer prints. If you want these they're in the shop uh, and they'll uh, make me feel a little bit, little bit less guilty for having to rebuy the PCBs because these were glaringly wrong. I mean they'll just look pretty on a wall or something maybe, I don't know, I mean they're up there if you want them. I'll just um, write a number and stuff on them. But anyway, enough jibber jabber, we've got to get this whole system put into the Game Boy Mega Machine. I know, the first thing we have to do is take out the old bus boards, which were just pieces of strip board, and that'll make it a lot less chaotic in the back and um, make place for all of these lovely things. If you can hear that humming in the background, basically I'm 3D printing on the Lulzbot Mini some 3D printed PCB mounts. And these are because I didn't really plan how to actually mount these. So uh, yeah, it's just something that'll offset it and hold it up in the back to make it look lovely and neat. Mm. Okay, so the bus boards are installed. We haven't put the actual uh, controller module into the bottom case yet because I'm still waiting for something to finish 3D printing. However, as you can see, the backlights are lit, but that's the same as before you say. However, these are now controllable separately. Like I can turn them on and off whenever I want. So I may quickly code a startup sequence. You know, when you start something up, it does a funky flash. So um, I'm gonna go and do that now. So I've just updated the code on this Arduino using a 
computer. I can't show you that on this channel, I'm afraid, unless it's before 1994, which sadly the computer I was using is not. So I'm gonna plug this in, update the other two that are on the other bus board, and hopefully we'll have a beautiful startup sequence because every piece of machinery needs a pointlessly lovely startup sequence. There we go. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So this part of the bus board is a bit of a success. Sadly, some of these are not turning on. I have a feeling that there's some dry joints on my circuit board. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> yeah. Time to put the control panel and all of its ribbon wires that go around to the back of the actual bus boards into the case. So yeah. Hey. Oh yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Oh. Basically just printed these on the low spot mini and they're just made to hold these beautiful things. And I've printed the wrong ones! No! In. Lovely there. So it's all plugged in. I've got all of the knobs all functioning as they should do. However, I haven't tested it yet because I'm about to go to bed and the worst thing for me to do right now would be to test it and it doesn't work because it will be either I'll stay up way long or I'll end up like going to bed really annoyed. So I'm gonna leave the excitement of whether it's gonna work or not till tomorrow morning. So um, yeah, wish me luck. Woo! Night! So it's the morning and I've just plugged in the bottom row to uh, the speakers using a makeshift kind of wire just to make it quickly work. I'm not going to test the other two because I'm waiting for a few operational amplifiers to turn up for them to actually work because I ran out because it needs so many. And yeah, if this works I'm going to be happy because I know that I wouldn't have wasted a whole three weeks or so on this idea. Fingers crossed, let's turn it on and see what happens. <laughs> It works, except for the fact that I've wired it back to front, so that is that Game Boy, and that is that Game Boy. I need to resolder this so it's uh, actually the right Game Boys to the right knobs. But that's for another moment in time. Right now, we're on to the Nitro 2K01 Res uh, Game Boy ROM, and it's basically just a drone. But I'm just gonna kinda jazz it up a bit and get rolling so you can see that it's basically just a volume mixer. <laughs> Now I'm going to use the master controller that controls all the buttons on these Game Boys to change the resonance. This is still only eight Game Boys. Like I said, the other two I'm waiting for some more chips to turn up to put into the bus boards, but whatever, it sounds pretty crazy even if it's just eight Game Boys. That's pretty awesome, but it's really not showing what this uh, bus board and setup can really do. I can only really show that when the rest of it's all built in and set up. So yeah, I need to get on with building this Game Boy Mega Machine so I can really show you what all of this stuff can do, but hopefully it'll all build up and add to something that's crazy and just a ridiculously large sounding and looking 
kind of machine that plays some pretty cool music. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build another three rows of these on top of the Game Boy Mega Machine. So that ends up with all six of the Game Boy voices. And then after that, I'm going to worry about over here, which is where it's going to be kind of working out how to make this all polyphonic. Still not 100% worked out how to do that yet because there's a lot of problems, but we'll talk about that later on. And then after that, I need to make a patch bay for all of the analog circuitry over there. And then over there, I've got to design all of the analog circuitry. And then nearly, nearly, I reckon we'll be nearly done. And then it'll be onto the drum machine, which is another another 18 Game Boys. Anyway, if you want these limited run prints of, uh, you know, mistaken uh, PCB boards, they're up on the shop. And then I also update very often about this project on my Patreon. And I want to thank the Patreon supporters because this project is damn expensive. And um, I, it wouldn't be possible without the help of the supporters on Patreon. So thank you very much, everyone on Patreon. If you want to see more about the information on if you want to support this, then the links are in the description. I've been Luke Mum No Computer. I'm going to carry on building this and don't be scared to try it. Woo! Heartbreak, I'm a kid in the side.